Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. And so in this video I'd like to give you an introduction to a, quite a novel plant. So this is a tomato grafted on top of a potato. Some of you may have heard about it before, but it's quite an unusual thing because um, you wouldn't think the two plants would be closely related enough to really work as a graft on each other. But it does work and it means you can double crop. So on the top half I have a tomato plant, the bottom half is a potato plant. What that means is I can, in the same area of soil I can grow tomatoes and harvest the tomatoes. Once the tomato plant has died at the end of the season I can then dig up the plant and there'll be potatoes underneath. So I say it's quite an unusual graft. There are some uh, nurseries that sell the plants as very young plants that you can buy. I've never really bought them in the past because I, what I've, I've always thought, but I've never actually grown them so I can't say for sure, is um, what you're trying to do is get the plant to put its energy into two parts um, and so you're trying to harvest two things and so instead of having lots of tomatoes or lots of potatoes you're probably just going to have a few tomatoes and a few potatoes because that plant has to provide energy for the tomatoes that are ripening but it also has to provide energy for the potatoes that are forming at the base so in my mind you'd probably get less tomatoes than you would expect normally less potatoes than you would expect normally but if you've got a very small spot then that would probably make sense because you know if you don't have a lot of space but you want to have tomatoes and potatoes this would be quite a good solution but grown normally, if you grow them separately, it's a lot easier because you don't have to graft and worry about the graft taking root or breaking off. And you can just grow the plant tailored to the individual needs of that plant. And so you'd probably get a better harvest doing them separately. But I'm looking online, there's, there's, not, there's very little documentation about this plant. Um, it's often called a pomato. That's one of the common names for it. Or just a grafted tomato potato. Um, there's very little documentation online as to whether it's a good idea or not. Um, there's a few seed companies, as I say, that do sell them, but they've been saying that more just for the novelty of having potatoes and tomatoes growing on one plant. And looking into the history slightly, there's been records of it going back to 200 years of people grafting potatoes and tomatoes on, each, on top of each other. But um, it, as it's never taken off, I've always presumed it's never as, uh, as efficient way of growing them as it would be normally. So I started this graft probably a couple of months ago. It, this was a very young potato plant. And I'll zoom in now so you can see the graft union. So this down here is the graft union. So the darker green section without any hairs, that's the, the young potato plant that I grafted on top of. And everything above that is the tomato plant. If I rotate it around, you should hopefully be able to see the kind of graft it is. It's basically a V-shape at the bottom and a kind of a point at the top. Now I left this little shoot from the potato growing up just so you can see that there is actually a potato plant growing under here. But I'm going to cut that off. I need to make sure anything that grows up from the potato underneath is cut off. All I want is the tubers. If I let the leaves grow up then it might take over and to take, some of, take some of the energy away from the tomato. So I'll remove that now. But uh, you can probably get a slightly better clearer view of that now. You can see the graft there. It's kind of a cleft shape and uh, that's how I've, I've slotted them in. So this was done with a very young plant. I, I, I would expect this to work best with the youngest plants because the stem size is the same and because when they're very young they're actively expanding their, their stems and uh, strengthening their, their stems so it's more likely for the graft union to take. And this took quite well. It probably only took about a week until I started getting some decent growth on the tomato. And I've been quite surprised at the rate of growth. It's quite a small pot, but it's grown very well. Uh, considering the size of the pot, I would have expected a much weaker plant. And normally I, I bury the stems of my tomatoes to encourage more rooting down the side to uh, get a better root system. But on this, it's actually grown really well. So it's looking quite good to begin with. The, the root system looks quite strong on the potato plant so far. So I should get quite a strong tomato plant by the looks of things, and I've even started to get some flowers as well. So thinking about the tomato and the potato, although they are closely related, there's so many differences that I am quite surprised that they do actually graft so well and, and the graft is actually quite easy to do. I've done a few grafts in my time as a student studying horticulture, um, but this potato tomato graft seemed a lot easier than some of the other hardwood grafts that I've done in the past. One of the reasons I wouldn't expect a tomato and a potato to graft well is when potato stems get older they're actually hollow but tomato stems they're completely solid in the middle when they get older so the stem structure is very different as they mature the potato becomes hollow in the center of the stem whereas the tomato keeps a solid core in the middle of its stem. It does have um, a slightly fleshier part to the middle of the tomato stem but it never gets completely hollow so it's quite surprising to me that the, uh, the two can actually join together as well as they do. 
That's another reason I thought the younger stems would do better because the the, uh, t the potato stem when it's young isn't hollow yet, so it, it should graft a lot easier because it doesn't have the, the big difference between the two stems. Another reason why it's quite surprising that they do so well together is they grow in completely different climates. So tomato plants are definitely tropical or, trop or, or subtropical. They need a climate where it's probably 20 to 30 degrees most days. Uh, they like the really hot, warm weather. If it's cold, anything below 10 degrees, they just stop growing and, and peter out. And to be honest, it really needs to be above 20 for them to do well. Lots of sunshine, loads of warmth, lots of water. Uh, potatoes, they like lots of water as well, but um, they are really a temperate species. Especially most of the ones that have been bred for growing. Um, most You do get tropical potatoes, but the vast majority are not tropical, they're actually temperate. Potatoes can grow surprisingly well in cold temperatures, so even in places like Shetland where it's only 12 to 16 degrees in summer a lot of the time is a maximum temperature, they can grow just happily, the cold temperatures doesn't bother them at all. Potatoes though, are, because they are not fully hardy, the, the frost does still kill them, so they can't take freezing temperatures, but cold temperatures are absolutely no problem for them, and often you plant them where there's still frost, and as long as the tubers don't get frozen, the plants should be fine, they'll grow through fine. So it's quite surprising really that tomatoes to a tropical plant would grow so well on a, on a potato which isn't tropical, but that could be an advantage because often I'm growing these plants in greenhouses where the, the air is nice and hot, but the, um, the soil is quite cold still because it's spring. I'm in a temperate climate and the, uh, the, our soil is always about 12 or 14 degrees in the summertime. So it could help the tomato in that way. It wouldn't make a difference if it's in a pot because the temperature is uh, elevated when it's in a pot. But if it's in the soil, that could be an advantage, I suppose. Another weird thing is the tomato root system and the potato root system is very different. So potato root systems in general, they only grow about two or three feet in, in total per plant. So they're not a very big, vigorous root system. Although, the, the amount, although they don't spread much, the amount of soil they do fill is very full of roots. Whereas the tomato, it, its roots spread much further, they can go up to two meters or so in, in total. So they have a really uh, adventurous root system because uh, they have to support a much larger plant. So you would expect maybe that the root system on the potato to be less vigorous, provide less energy to a tomato than its original root system. However, um, the, the potato seems to be more efficient at gathering a lot of nutrients from a smaller space. So in a pot situation, that's possibly why this is doing better than normal because the root system is constrained, whereas a constrained tomato plant would struggle a bit more than a constrained potato plant. And another thing that makes it quite unusual that they can grow well together is the life cycle of the plants. So um, tomatoes, they, they, they keep growing almost forever. Unless it's a determinate variety, which are like slightly less common, most tomatoes just keep growing as long as it's warm enough, and they'll just keep. Uh, the, although the original plant might die, the, the stems will grow down, and reroot and just keep growing. So nothing really stops tomatoes normally. Most of the time they die is because of disease or because it's too cold. It's got to the end of the summer. But tomatoes basically, they don't have anything in them that tells them to stop growing. But with a with a potato plant, it has a life cycle where it grows up lots of leaves, flowers occasionally sets a few fruits which do look very similar to tomatoes but are poisonous and then after they've set their fruits they die down the leaves go yellow and they just the, the, all the energy goes back into the tubers so it'll be interesting to see what happens with this i don't know what it is that triggers the the life cycle in the, in the potato because if you get the early potatoes it seems to be genetic because the early potatoes they they actually die down really early so they, they only last probably for about two or three months growing and then they'll just automatically die back because they know it's ready for them to finish and just set the tubers and this is actually a, a first early variety that i've grafted onto here so this variety should naturally want to die back pretty soon because it's been growing for a couple of months now um, but it'll be interesting to see if the potato gets its cues from its root system or from its top growth but I feel like it might be the top half of the potato that determines when it starts to die back because the potato nearly always dies back just after it's finished flowering so it seems to be the flowering in the potato that triggers it to then go dormant but the tomato is 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 um, used to just continually growing after it's finished flowering so I'm expecting it not to die back although normally you would expect a potato root system to die back as soon as the flowers are uh, starting to appear so it'll be interesting to see with that but I expect it to grow for longer which could mean we could actually get more potatoes because it'll have a longer growing season I suspect we won't though because the tomato will be trying to put as much energy as it can into its fruits because tomatoes naturally don't form any tubers the way they want to keep going is just put all the energy into the fruit 
and then the seeds will, will pass on for the next generation. Whereas potatoes, although they produce seeds, the, the main way of going on for the next generation is through tubers. So they put most of their, their energy, probably 95% of their energy into the tubers, especially as we've bred them like that, so that we don't waste any energy from the plant going into, into the fruit. We just want all the energy going into the tubers. Potato plants want all that energy into the tuber for the next generation, whereas tomato wants it into the fruit. So the two halves will be battling it out between them uh, for energy. So that will be interesting to see what happens. Also with the root system for the potatoes, as I say, is it is smaller, but maybe with the tomato being a bigger plant, it will demand more from the, the root system and encourage it to grow a larger root system. We'll just have to see. So with this one, I'm actually going to be planting in a really big pot in the uh, polytunnel. That makes it easier for me to control the soil and also so I can get a harvest, so I can harvest it easier. So I'll show you that in the second half of the video, but quickly I'll just show you a couple of other graphs I've tried. Just out of interest, I thought I would try some older tomato plants that were just about to go dormant to see what would happen if I grafted them. So these are the plants here. Now these grafts are certainly taking longer. These are probably about two weeks now and there's no strong gro growth, so it's not. it doesn't look like the grafts are taking quite yet. And these are much more mature stems. I thought I'd just experiment Normally, uh, I would, as I say, the younger the plant the better and the smaller the stem because then you don't have the hollow stem on the potato. So what I've done here is with these two I've matched up the, um, the stem to the same size. This one I've put in a small stem from the tomato so it's, the, it's a really bad mismatch with the stem size. All of them seem to be doing okay. This one's doing the worst, the smaller one. The other two, they tend to wilt in the hot weather and then they come back. You can see there, there, there is some new growth on them. They have started to grow, but the growth isn't very strong. So it could just be that they've got sap coming up from the potato and that that's being sucked up by the tomato graft. It might not actually be truly grafted together. So we'll see if these survive. These don't seem to be doing anywhere near as well as the first planter did, uh, but I thought it would just be an interesting experiment to see how it does. This one, as I say, was quite a mature potato plant. It was about two foot tall. And if you look at the bottom there, there's actually potatoes already growing out the base. So it was already in the uh, tuber forming stage. So that would I would expect that to die back naturally soon anyway. So I'm going to put my grafted tomato in a big pot. Um, it will be interesting to see how it does. The, the potato plant naturally is quite a small plant. So it only grows about two or three foot at the most. Tomato plants, on the other hand, they can grow probably 16 feet if you let them. So it's a much larger plant and it's going to be demanding a lot from that root system. So it'll be interesting to see if the root system grows to, to accommodate the size of the tomato or if the tomato will just become weakened because the root system can't keep up. The variety I put on here isn't a very good variety really for, um, for this root system because I've gone for a large plum tomato on this. The plum tomatoes take a long time to ripen up. So if the plant's struggling at all, I might not get a very good crop of, of tomatoes at all. But we'll see how it does. And also it's a bit late in the year, it's now the middle of June. It's only just starting to come into flower, so it might not fully ripen the tomatoes. But at least we'll get a sense of how well it does. With this other one here, I did put cherry tomatoes on it. So even if this is, is quite a bit further behind, the cherry tomatoes ripen really fast. So this, these ones actually might come on and if, if, they do, if the graphs do take, have a better crop uh, than this one here because as I say the, the large plum tomatoes and the beefsteak tomatoes they tend to take quite a long time to actually um, to ripen. And one more thing I'm going to say about this plant before I plant it up is the um, when it comes to pruning it normally I would do the uh, the kind of pruning where you just leave one stem you take out all the side shoots and um, that way you focus all the energy on the fruit. With this one I'm just actually going to let it grow all the side shoots. The reason for that is I looked up a very old study done in the 1920s about root systems on tomatoes and so the root systems on tomatoes are far bigger if they're not pruned. So although I'm not going to be concentrating all the energy onto the fruits and I'm probably going to get more leaves and stems, it means the root system is going to be a lot bigger and that's hopefully going to give me more potatoes. Also it's a method I've never tried here in Scotland and because I've always been told always prune it because the season's short, you're not going to get any fruit unless you do this kind of pruning. But I'd like to try this without pruning just to see how it does, just out of interest, because I know a lot of people in hotter countries and subtropical countries, they just put a large cage around the tomato plant, let it sprawl, un un uh, pruned, untrained, and they get a great crop. But of course, they've got a longer growing season, so I just wanted to see what might happen if I do that in Scotland. So to give you some context of where I'm going to be growing this tomato grafted onto a potato, it's a, it's a, I'm in North Scotland at 58 degrees north, it's a polytunnel, uh, it's not heated, but it has a heat recovery system where I pump the hot air underground to store some of that heat overnight. So it's not heated, but it does retain the heat quite well during the night time because we do store the heat underground. 
Um, very humid atmosphere, lots of other tomatoes around. I don't have any space to put it in the ground, so that's another reason I'm using a pot. This is the pot I'm putting it in. This is a sunken pit where we grow tomatoes and other tropical seedlings in the springtime when it's too cold. And this just gives them a little bit of extra protection from the frost. We just put a couple of sheets of perspex over the surface that keeps them nice and warm. But this is this pit otherwise doesn't have any use to in the summer. So I'm putting this large pot in here. It's quite a big one, this one. It's the biggest pot we've got. It's 110 litres, so it's got a huge capacity for holding um, soil and moisture. Now, uh, this should be more than big enough for the tomato plant, so this shouldn't really get too uh, obstructed by the, the size of the, the, the soil. So there shouldn't be any restriction on the, to its growth, hopefully. It, the reason it's got grass in it at the moment is we've just been using it to store grass clippings, but, but they'll just rot down and add to the fertility of the soil. Now the soil I'm going to be using is, uh, is the sandy loam mix, it's just my parents' uh, topsoil. I'm going to be mixing it in with uh, compost just to, to add some nutrition because it's quite lacking in organic matter. And I'm also going to be mixing in some blood fish and bone and fertiliser just to make sure it's a really nice rich mix so it gets plenty of feed that it needs. And I'm also going to grow around the edge just a ring of... Um, bush beans, so some dwarf French beans, and the idea of that is they're going to be low, they're not going to compete too much with the tomato plant, and they'll, they should trail over the edge, it should look quite nice. And we will, we might get a bit of congestion here when this uh, squash, butternut squash plant starts to grow through, but I'll just keep an eye on that. So I'll just go ahead now, mix this in with lots of soil and compost, and I'll come back to you guys when it's ready for planting. So that's the pot now filled up ready for planting. Now when it comes to planting this needs to be quite careful because where the two plants have been grafted together it's going to be quite a loose connection, there's a real chance it could break. So I'm definitely going to have to keep it well staked. So I have already had it staked uh, there to begin with. And the other thing I need to be very careful of is how deep I'm planting it. So I can show you the graft union here. So there's quite a lot of roots coming out from the gra above the graft union from the tomato plant. I need to just snap them off and be careful that I don't bury any of the tomato stem. Because if I bury the tomato stem, what will happen is it will put its, root its own roots down, establish its own root system, and it will just kind of ignore the uh, t potato root system. And then I won't really get many potatoes. So I need to make sure that I don't bury it too deep at all. It will be a bit tricky because normally you actually earth up potatoes so that you don't get any light on the potatoes and that, that way you get a higher crop and you also don't get any green potatoes. But I can't do that in this instance so I'm just going to have to be uh, careful that I don't get any green potatoes because as I say normally you would earth it up but I need to be careful not to, to cover that stem at all. So I'm just going to very carefully take it out of the pot here. I can't see any any signs of potatoes forming yet, but there's probably a few very small ones just starting. It's got a very healthy root system though, so that's good to see. So I'm just going to be very careful and make sure it's at the correct level. So after grafted tomato now planted, uh, as I said before, there's quite a lot of feed in the soil, so I won't be feeding it at first, but as soon as the, uh, the roots start to form and they're starting to get some tomatoes, then I'll just start feeding it with ordinary tomato feed. And the good thing is tomato feed is also quite good for, for potatoes, so that should encourage a good crop at, at, on, at the underneath level. But because it's quite a small polytunnel and I want to make the most from this space, I'm also going to underplant the ring of this pot with some dwarf bush beans, and that will just give me an extra crop. So that's all for this video. I'll give you guys an update probably in a few months' time, either when this is fruiting or when it's starting to die down and I can harvest the potatoes and see what we've got. That's all for now, and I'll see you guys later with an update.